What's up, friends? Glad you're joining me on the Challenging Conversations show brought to you by the Edify Podcast Network. Challenging Conversations is a podcast intended to empower Christians to be bold and not afraid to jump into controversial topics with anyone on any topic, anytime. Now, today we're going to be talking about something regarding UFOs or extraterrestrial or space aliens. And if you look at the belief that many people have had through the centuries, even if you go back as far back as ancient Greeks, they believed and they even worshipped this idea of extraterrestrials among them. And you see that in full display among many of those ancient cultures. And even if you reflect and look at what's happening today, the belief in ET, right, or space aliens is still going strong. And some will even say the ET phenomenon is gaining even more popularity than ever before. And catch this, even among Christians themselves. So on today's podcast, we're dealing with challenging conversations. Perhaps maybe you have had a conversation with a fellow believer at church or over coffee or at your house where you're hanging out in the backyard, the kids are running around playing, and one of your buddies gets into some of these conspiracy theories uh, regarding UFOs. So perhaps you've talked to somebody who said that they were abducted by extraterrestrial beings. How do you respond to these things? Is it in fact crazy for Christians to believe in not just UFO sightings, but to actually believe that there are alien beings, there's alien life beyond our own planet. Matter of fact, if you even look at this discussion, there are many people out there that say it's a major contradiction for people to believe that there is life outside of this planet. But I'm not going to ad- address that that way on the, on the podcast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus it on three specific things that you can look at that in many ways, I would say, refutes the, this idea that there are UFOs or there's extraterrestrial outside of our planet. Now, the fact is, if you do look at a lot of these different UFO sightings, most of them are hoaxes, okay? So we can, we can put to bed that, that many of these false images or false uh, footage of, of UFO sightings is, in fact, Um, a hoax, the vast majority of them. Now, what do you do with some of these unreleased footage of uh, some of our pilots in our Air Force who are flying around and they see these uh, objects that are doing things and turns that no uh, equipment that we know of on the planet can do? Well, we'll touch on that. I'm going to use a video by Dr. Hugh Ross to kind of refute some of these things. But also, when just look at the, the, the popularity that we're seeing among some of these Uh, paranormal activities and so a lot of people in the Roswell community the ET community people who who are summoning and trying uh, to you know take notice or get our government to take notice of of trying to reach out to life out there beyond our planet so they can communicate with these extraterrestrials many of them believe that we came from them millions of years ago but when you see these um, paranormal activities you see the connection of where a lot of these people are spiritual uh, believers. They believe in things beyond just the physical. Uh, But what does that really mean? And how does it align to scripture? Because in some cases, Christians who do believe in the supernatural, you find many of them, many of our loved ones, who start falling into not just these conspiracy theories or the paranormal activities, but you can see how they're being misguided theologically in what these creatures represent and what they're all about, and how they're communicating and why they're communicating with these supposed extraterrestrial beings. So I want to I want to touch on this, you guys, today because it, it's been on my heart lately, and there's been a lot of research that I've been doing, and I was thinking about certain guests to have come on, and and maybe perhaps I'll do that down the road on the podcast. But right now, I just wanted to have this conversation with many of you of our our faithful listeners because I've gotten some emails from several of you guys in the last several months. And, and again, just kind of people are curious, but also people who are having some serious dialogue with a brother or sister in Christ at church who says, yes, you would be a fool not to believe in ET or this, in, in space aliens. And they conjure these things up or they, the iterations are different, you know, are, are basically the same. If they say we're talking about demons and angels 
and then they, and you you want to use the word extraterrestrial or you know you want to talk about these interdimensional beings they they believe they're all one and the same so i want to make a distinction there because i don't think that's proper theology as a christian and so hopefully as we have this discussion we lay into this that when you're finished with this podcast that you'll be able to not just be emboldened to have some of these conversations, but that you in respect with your friend who buys into some of these conspiracy theories, that you can have a, a reasonable and effective uh, and long lasting conversation and relationship with this person. You know, I have several of them. Matter of fact, I remember I was in a study and an individual just started to get into a lot of these conspiracy things. And so I flat out asked about their belief in UFO sightings and aliens. And of course they fully embraced them. And, you know, he was very respectful. Wasn't saying that I would be a fool not to believe this. He's just saying, how can you not believe in the overwhelming evidence that doesn't just suggest, but points overwhelmingly that there are species that live beyond us and who and on occasion uh, throughout history have interacted with human beings. Now, why are there many people who contend, who argue vehemently that UFO sightings uh, are aliens surveying or monitoring the world? Well, in one sense, if you look at some of the, the sightings um, that we have, again, like I said, a lot of people are convinced by those. Now, the vast majority of people in the public and experts who've examined it have seen them to be doctored up, you know, pictures, uh, footage that people had embedded different images to make it look like it was real. So the vast majority of stuff is a hoax. But beyond that, we also have certain sites throughout history. The Nascau lines in, in Peru, for example, these extraordinary, uh, you know, geometrical designs of animal beings, uh, even some creatures that are unknown to the animal kingdom and Many people believe that aliens landed and designed these for, uh, you know, human worship. Uh, you have the pyramids in Egypt. There, are, Again, you will still have the conspiracy theorists, people believing that the pyramids in the times of Egypt thousands of years ago had no ability to erect such structures. Um, and so they had to have the help of not just extraterrestrials, but also using their advanced machinery in order to build these massive structures or the Stonehenge in England, right? So these are book, their books have been written on these people have done dissertations on these kind of things. So there are a lot of people who are rationally and historically trying to make the case that we can see interactions with aliens. Now, if you want to go to the great lengths of discussing them in, in regards to paranormal activity, they say, have at it. But what we're saying is we look at history and we can actually see that there are times outside of the natural where we cannot explain, you know, what, what this actually is. And so 